Hello and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanziba Naurin. In today's bulletin, we will present top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Biden announces 2024 re election bid. Let's finish this job. I am stunned, anchor John Lehman says, fired after 17 years at CNN. Harry Belafonte, US actor and civil rights activist, dies at 96. US default on debt will trigger an economic catastrophe, says Yellen. One dead in Oklahoma college shooting, suspect in custody. U.S. Republican presidential hopefuls head to Taiwan, Japan. U.S. charges North Korean bank official over crypto laundering. U.S. launches first deportation flight to Cuba since COVID-19. Netflix to drop $2.5 billion on Korean content after Squid Game Mania. Actor Danny Masterson drugged, raped women, prosecutor says. Ukraine's allies denounce cynical Russian meeting at UN. Mob kills 13 suspected Haiti gangsters with gas-soaked tires. Two killed, 10 wounded as Russian forces hit Ukrainian museum. Tokyo company loses contact with moon lander in likely crash. Kenya cult deaths hits 90 as authorities expand operation. And European lawmakers urge for Olympics ban on Russia, Belarus. You are listening to headlines, now news in detail. President Joe Biden on Tuesday formally announced that he is running for re-election in 2024, asking voters to give him more time to finish this job and extend the run of America's oldest president for another four years. Biden, who would be 86 at the end of his second term, is baiting his first-term legislative achievements and more than 50 years of experience in Washington will count for more than concerns over his age. He faces a smooth path to winning his party's nomination, with no serious Democratic challengers. But he is still set for a hard-fought struggle to retain the presidency in a bitterly divided nation. In his first public appearance Tuesday since the announcement, Biden offered a preview of how he plans to navigate the dual roles of president and presidential candidate, using a speech to building trades union members to highlight his accomplishments and undercut his GOP rivals, while showing voters he remained focused on his day job. Greeted by a raucous crowd of building trades union members, a key base of democratic support with Let's Go Joe chants, Biden touted the tens of thousands of construction jobs being created since he took office that are supported by the legislation he signed into law. We, you and I, together we are turning things around and we are doing it in a big way, Biden said. It's time to finish the job, finish the job. 
The official announcement in a three-minute video comes on the four-year anniversary of when Biden declared for the White House in 2019, promising to heal the soul of the nation amid the turbulent presidency of Donald Trump, a goal that has remained elusive. Cable television news network CNN has fired longtime host Don Lehman, the news anchor says in a post on Twitter, adding that he was stunned by the step and he was not directly informed of the termination by the network. I was informed this morning by my agent that I have been terminated by CNN. I am stunned, Lehman said on Monday. After 17 years at CNN, I would have thought that someone in management would have had the decency to tell me directly. At no time was I ever given any indication that I would not be able to continue to do the work I have loved at the network, he wrote. In a statement of its own, CNN said the network and Lehman had parted ways. It added that Lehman was offered a chance to meet with the network's management but he instead released a statement on his personal Twitter account. The network described Lehman's version of events as inaccurate. Don will forever be a part of the CNN family and we thank him for his contributions over the past 17 years. CNN's top boss Chris Leed said in a memo to staff, We wish him well and will be cheering him on in his future endeavors. Neither statement gave a reason for Lehman's departure. Harry Belafonte, a singer, songwriter, and groundbreaking actor who started his entertainment career belting Day O in his 1950s hit song Banana Boat before turning to political activism, has died at the age of 96, the New York Times reported. The cause of Belafonte's death was congestive heart failure, his longtime spokesperson Ken Sunshine told The Times on Tuesday. As a black leading man who explored racial themes in 1950s movies, Belafonte would later move on to working with his friend Martin Luther King Jr. during the United States Civil Rights Movement in the early 1960s. He became the driving force behind the celebrity-studded, famine-fighting hit song, We Are the World, in the 1980s. Belafonte once said he was in a constant state of rebellion that was driven by anger. Belafonte was born in New York City's borough of Manhattan but spent his early childhood in his family's native Jamaica. Handsome and suave, he came to be known as the King of Calypso early in his career. He was the first black person allowed to perform in many plush night sports and also had racial breakthroughs in movies at a time when segregation prevailed in much of the U.S. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Tuesday warned that failure by Congress to raise the government's debt ceiling and the resulting default would trigger an economic catastrophe that would send interest rates higher for years to come. Yellen, in remarks prepared for a Washington event with business executives from California, said a default on United States debt would result in job losses while driving household payments on mortgages, auto loans, and credit cards higher. She said it was the basic responsibility of Congress to increase or suspend the $31.4 trillion borrowing cap, warning that a default would threaten the economic progress that the United States has made since the COVID-19 pandemic. A default on our debt would produce an economic and financial catastrophe, Yellen told Sacramento Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce members. A default would raise the cost of borrowing into perpetuity. Future investments would become substantially more costly. If the debt ceiling is not raised, U.S. businesses will face deteriorating credit markets and the government will likely be unable to issue payments to military families and seniors who rely on Social Security, she said. A man shot to death a 20-year-old student Monday at Rose State College in Oklahoma, according to police, who reported no other injuries after the campus was briefly put on lockdown. Midwest City Police Chief Seat Porter said the suspect surrendered upon being approached by officers after the shooting near the center of the 13,000-student campus. The two-year college is just outside Oklahoma City. 
In a statement, police identified the suspect as Brandon Morissette, who faces a first-degree murder charge. It was not immediately clear whether he had an attorney Monday night. Porter said the victim and Morissette's wife, who is also a student at Rose State College, were walking out of a building when they were confronted by the gunman. The victim, who police did not immediately identify, was pronounced dead on the scene. Porter did not provide any other details about what might have led to the shooting. Kevin McCormack, a student from the suburb of Choctaw, said he was meeting a friend on campus when he heard gunfire. He said they looked over and saw a man hitting the ground next to another man holding a gun and a woman who was trying to calm him down. Almost immediately we said, go, go, and took off, McCormack said. Rose State College cancelled classes for the remainder of the day after lifting the lockdown order. The Republican governor of the U.S. state of Virginia has made Taiwan president Tsai Ing-wen as Republican hopefuls for the United States 2024 presidential race seek to lift their campaigns with international tours. Glenn Youngkin, a former hedge fund manager who pulled off a surprise win in the Virginia governor's race, made Tsai Ing-wen in Taipei on Tuesday as part of a trade mission, their officers said. Taiwan is an important partner and model of prosperity for nations across the globe, Youngkin said as he announced the establishment of a Taiwan-Virginia Economic Development Office. Tsai said she was happy to receive friends from the U.S., adding that Taipei has always enjoyed strong links with the state of Virginia. That Governor Youngkin has chosen Taiwan as the destination for his first overseas trip since taking office is especially significant, she said. The governor, a rising Republican star and considered a possible contender for the 2024 nomination, although he has yet to declare his candidacy, is also due to visit South Korea and Japan. The United States has charged a North Korean bank official over his alleged involvement in laundering cryptocurrencies stolen on behalf of Pyongyang. Sim Hyu Sop, a representative of the North Korean Foreign Trade Bank, is suspected of conspiring with cryptocurrency traders to use stolen funds to buy goods for North Korea, the U.S. Department of Justice said in a statement on Monday. Sim, who is 39 years old, is also charged with conspiring with North Korean IT workers to generate revenue through illegal employment at blockchain firms in the U.S., the department said. The charges announced today respond to innovative attempts by North Korean operatives to evade sanctions by exploiting the technological features of virtual assets to facilitate payments and profits and targeting virtual currency companies for theft, Assistant Attorney General Kenneth Applewhite Jr. said. We will continue to work to disrupt and deter North Korean actors and those who aid them by following the money on the blockchain and shining a light on their conduct, he said. Wu Huihui, a Chinese national who is named in court documents as a co-conspirator in the money laundering scheme, was also charged with operating an unlicensed money transmitting business. The United States has sent its first deportation flight to Cuba since 2020, months after the island nations agreed for the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic, to accept flights carrying Cubans caught at the U.S.-Mexico border. On April 24, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement resumed normal removals processing for Cuban nationals who have received final orders of removal, a Department of Homeland Security spokesperson said in an emailed statement. The Cuban government confirmed the flight's arrival, saying on Twitter it included 40 Cubans intercepted in boards and 83 detained at the U.S.-Mexico border. The Reuters news agency first reported late last year that Cuba agreed to give U.S. authorities a new but limited tool to deter record numbers of Cuban border crossers. Netflix has announced it will spend $2.5 billion on South Korean content in the latest sign of Korean culture's explosive popularity worldwide. CEO Ted Sanders made the announcement on Monday following a meeting with South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol, who is on a six-day visit to the United States. 
We were able to make this decision because we have great confidence that the Korean creative industry will continue to tell great stories, Sarantel said in a statement. Yoon hailed the announcement as a great opportunity for Korean creators at Netflix. South Korean film and music have gained global renown in recent years amid the stunning success of K-pop acts including BTS and Blackpink and films such as the Oscar-winning Parasite. Netflix series Squid Game, which tells the story of indebted contestants in a deadly competition for a cash prize, became the streaming service's most watched show of all time upon its release in 2021, quickly racking up more than 1.6 billion views. More recently, Korean produced The Glory, a drama about a woman seeking revenge on her bullies from school, and Physical 100, a reality fitness competition, have ranked among the popular shows on the site. More than 6 in 10 Netflix viewers watched a South Korean produced program on the site in 2022, according to company data. Actor Danny Masterson drugged then raped three women at his Hollywood area home between 2001 and 2003, a prosecutor told jurors Monday in his opening statement in the retrial of the stir of that 70s show. Deputy District Attorney Reinhold Muller said Masterson put substances into drinks that he gave to a long-time girlfriend and two women he knew through friend circles around the Church of Scientology all of whom Masterson is charged with raping. The evidence will show that they were drugged, Muller told the jury. The defense denies such evidence exists. Direct discussion of drugging was missing from the first trial, which ended in a mistrial when a jury deadlocked on all three counts, with Muller instead having to imply it through the testimony of the women, who said they were oozy, disoriented, and at times unconscious on the nights they described the actor raping them. But Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Sherlyn F. Olmedo is allowing the direct assertion at the second trial. Masterson's attorney Philip Cohen said in the defense opening statement that those hazy stories and assertions are all the prosecution has. And he told jurors there is no drug in charge in the case. Attorneys for both sides acknowledge that there is no forensic evidence of any substances Masterson may have given the women because the police investigation that led to the two trials did not begin until about 15 years after the events. Now it's time for global updates. Ukraine's international allies blasted Russia during a United Nations Security Council meeting chaired by Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov that focused on protecting the principles of the UN's charter, which Moscow itself is accused of violating by invading Ukraine last year. In a note to UN member states laying out the premise for the meeting on Monday, Russia denounced the unipolar world order that took effect after the end of the Cold War. Before the meeting, Lavrov said the UN system was enduring a profound crisis and accused Western countries, particularly the United States, of being responsible. It's not all about Ukraine, he told reporters. It's about how international relations will continue to be shaped through the establishment of a sound consensus on the basis of balance of interest or through aggressive and volatile advancement of Washington's hegemony, Leverov said. Russia currently holds the monthly rotating presidency of the UN Security Council and organized the meeting as one of the signature events of its tenure. A mob in the Haitian capital beat and burned 13 suspected gang members to death with gasoline-soaked tires Monday. After pulling the men from police custody at a traffic stop, police and witnesses said the horrific vigilante violence underlined public anger over the increasingly lawless situation in Port-au-Prince where criminal gangs have taken control over an estimated 60% of the city since the July 2021 assassination of President Jovenel Moise. Six more burnt bodies were laid in a nearby neighborhood later Monday, and some witnesses said that police killed them and residents set them on fire. 
Haiti National Police said in a brief statement that officers in the city's canopy word section stopped and searched a minibus for contraband early Monday and had confiscated weapons from suspects before they were unfortunately lynched by members of the population. The statement did not elaborate on how members of the crowd were able to take control of the suspects. A Russian missile hit a museum building in a Ukrainian city on Tuesday, killing at least two people and wounding ten others, part of a relentless barrage that comes as Ukraine is raiding its forces for an expected spring counter-offensive. Ukrainian officials said the Russian military used S-300 air defense missiles to attack Kupiansk in the Kharkiv region, hitting the Museum of Local History in the city center. The Russian military has repeatedly used S-300S, which Ukraine's air defenses can't intercept, to attack ground targets. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky posted a video from the site that shows the ruined building and emergency responders examining the damage. The terrorist country is doing everything to destroy us completely, Zelensky said. Our history, our culture, our people. Killing Ukrainians with absolutely barbaric methods. Zelensky said that a museum worker was killed, and Kharkiv regional governor Ole later reported that the body of another victim was pulled from under the rubble. Senehu Bov said that three people were hospitalized and seven received minor injuries. A Japanese company lost contact with its spacecraft moments before touchdown on the moon Wednesday, saying the mission had apparently failed. Communication ceased as the lander descended the final 33 feet, traveling around 60 mph. Flight controllers peered at their screens in Tokyo, expressionless as minutes went by with no word from the lander, which is presumed to have crashed. We have to assume that we could not complete the landing on the lunar surface, said Takeshi Hakamada, founder and CEO of the company iSpace. If it had landed, the company would have been the first private business to pull off a lunar landing. Only three governments have successfully touched down on the moon, Russia, the United States, and China. An Israeli non-profit tried to land on the moon in 2019, but its spacecraft was destroyed on impact. The seven-foot lander Japanese lander carried a mini lunar rover for the United Arab Emirates and a toy-like robot from Japan designed to roll around in the moon dust. There were also items from private customers on board. The death toll at a ranch in coastal Kenya that is owned by a pastor who is accused of leading a religious cult and ordering his followers to starve themselves reached 90 on Tuesday, as the country's interior minister announced an expanded operation at the site. The new figure came after police exhumed 17 more bodies. The total number of those rescued while starving at the ranch now stands at 34. The Kenya Red Cross Society's latest figure on the number of missing is 213. Pastor Paul McKenzie, who heads the Good News International Church, is accused of luring his followers to the ranch near the town of Malindi. He allegedly told them to fast to death in order to meet Jesus before burying them in shallow graves spread across his land. He was arrested after police raided the property earlier this month, and he remains in police custody. Interior Minister Kitur Kindeki said that the security team will obstacle search and rescue missions to save as many lives as possible. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 15,363.53. The NYSE composite is decreased by 243.18 points or 1.56%. Tokyo stock close price is 28,620.07. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 26.55 points or 
Shanghai stock close price is 3264.8717. The Shanghai Composite Index is decreased by 10.54 points or 0.32%. Hong Kong stock close price is 19,617.88. The Hang Seng Index is decreased by 342.06 points or 1.71%. Bombay stock close price is 60,130.71. The Sensex Index is increased by 74.61 points or 0.12%. Let's have a look on today's sports story. European lawmakers urged the International Olympic Committee on Tuesday to exclude Russian and Belarusian athletes from the 2024 Paris Games rather than keep seeking ways to let them compete as neutrals in international sport. The 46th Nation Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe held a two-hour session in Strasbourg, France, of its panel for sports issues. It was to help draft a future report on the question of burying the two countries' athletes and officials from the Olympic movement because of the military invasion of Ukraine. With 15 months until the opening ceremony in Paris, Olympic sports bodies are weighing the IOC's formal request a reversal of its advice last year for exclusion. To look at reintegration, some Russians and Belarusians into games qualifying as individuals, but not in team events. Imposing a war has to have a clear consequence. Sport also has to take its responsibility, Danish lawmaker Morgens Jensen said, adding the only one clear message to send was excluding athletes. The Council of Europe was created after World War II to advocate for freedom and protection of minorities. It expelled Russia as a member last year. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest update. Millennium TV US and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment program. Thank you.